I have a really great question here about polycystic ovarian syndrome. And the question is, how can you have some, but not all or many of the regular symptoms yet be classified as having the condition? It's a really great question because polycystic ovarian syndrome is, accounts for probably about the highest reason as to uh, why women of the reproductive age are infertile. And uh, it's something like 15% of the population actually have polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, and what happens is that PCOS, it's, it's a condition that I have personally overcome. I have also treated many, many patients over the years with PCOS and it's absolutely possible to overcome it. It's just that it requires effort and it requires actually doing quite a bit of work. Right Now, what's interesting about this question is because in the diagnosis of PCOS, there's a whole lot of criteria. It's called the Rotterdam criteria for diagnosis of PCOS. And, and there are many, many things, and I'm actually going to go through and, and read um, the different criteria that fall. You know, that essentially, if you have two of the things that I read out, you can have PCOS without necessarily having cysts in your ovaries or follicles and or any of the other symptoms. You know, you might have two of the symptoms, but not all of the other symptoms and still have polycystic ovarian syndrome. So some of the symptoms are unovulation or oligo ovulation, where you ovulate multiple times in a cycle as opposed to just one. Hyperandrogenism, which is basically where you have higher androgens, which are the male hormones um, in the body. And you can also have, as a result of it, male pattern hair growth or hirsutism and, uh, or male pattern alopecia, which is hair loss in a male pattern type of way, like most men have as they get older. Um, you can also have high levels of, uh, estro uh, bigger pardon, of testosterone or raised uh, FAI, which is the free androgen index, okay? Now, you could have polycystic uh, ovaries with, on, on an ultrasound. And you could also have things like irregular or absent menstrual cycles. You could have one of the criteria is subfertility or infertility. There's also psychological symptoms that can present anxiety, depression, psychosexual dysfunction, eating disorders. And then there are other metabolic features that could accompany PCOS, like obesity and dyslipidemia, which is basically an imbalance in cholesterol levels or, or other lipids within the blood, as well as diabetes. In fact, it's said that polycystic ovarian syndrome is in some ways a precursor to diabetes. Insulin resistance is common in polycystic ovarian syndrome. So, you know, as you can see, it's really varied, the types of symptoms that you can have. You can just pick two of those things as, you know, part of the criteria, and you could actually have PCOS as a result of that. So, you know, that's really how it happens, that PCOS is one of those unpredictable conditions. Some women who have PCOS are like pencil thin, and they still have insulin resistance, and they still have, you know, perhaps follicles in their ovaries, or they have male pattern hirsutism, or you know another thing that's not uh, talked about in here, but that uh, will also make a difference, and it's one of the kind of tell telltale signs of polycystic diagnosis is where the LH, the luteinizing hormone, is two to three times higher than the FSH. Also, AMH levels that are above 30 typically indicate polycystic ovarian syndrome. So there are things that you can have a look at in blood, there are things that you can have a look at in ultrasound, and there are th symptoms that just happen uh, throughout the month. You know, when I was diagnosed with, um, with PCOS, I, was, I, I basically didn't have cycles at all. We had gone for a whole period of six months without a period. I was slightly overweight, and I think that that was the, oh, those were the two things that happened in the first instance. And then I also developed uh, several years later, terrible acne. And I was able to treat it naturally, you know, with the things that I tell my patients to do. But um, it was really quite bad, really. Um, and then, you know, just this not inability to lose weight necessarily, but it's very easy to put on weight. So that's something that happens with PCOS as well. So those were the symptoms for me. Now other women may have different symptoms altogether. And when I then started to decide to start trying to have a baby, I had gone through a period of two years 
of not having a cycle at all. So that's why infertility is so prevalent in women with PCOS because you can end up with going through long standing periods of not getting periods at all and or these abnormal metabolic dysfunction that, uh, that can happen as a result of, of, uh, of the condition itself. So there are many things that you can do about it. Exercise is going to be key. It's going to be so important to balance the hormones throughout the body and exercise really does help to do that very, very well. Eating well is going to be paramount and so crucial. Now for me, the difference that happened when I started to ovulate regularly after having gone for almost two years uh, of not having periods and, and doing my herbs and, and, and everything else, that did help. It, it helped to really start to condense and bring the cycles to a much more manageable, like instead of, you know, gosh, 360 days or more, you know, my cycle started to be about 70 days apart. And then they went to 50 days apart. And, uh, and it was when I stopped eating sugar altogether and just really was eating super healthily and completely quit sugar that my cycle started to become very regular. And, and then it was, you know, it was a whole lot easier to conceive. And then I ended up carrying two beautiful, healthy boys to term. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, the rest is history. But it is definitely something that needs to be worked at. It's not something that just happens often, you know, and, uh, and doing the work is going to be key in this particular instance. So get in there, do the work, and I hope that helps. And until next time, bye for now.